So, what's new? What's new? Well, for one, we were robbed. We were robbed. Someone broke into our office. Yes, they did that during a weekend, and they they made a mess. Of they here. made a huge mess. And they took like four computers. They off. took like four computers plus the mess, and they broke. We have a, our office door is this big glass window or yeah. big glass door, and they just basically smashed through yeah, that and yeah. came in. And we were vacuum glass for a week. For here. a week, because it's funny we would get we thought we'd get rid of everything all of a sudden you sit down and there's another piece of glass yeah, it was never ending we woke up on a sunday and then there were like a gazillion messages from the police yes and it was like 9 30 in the morning mm -hmm. and then the guy here complained that we were hard to reach and we well, it's thinking, a sunday it's a sunday we people were sleep in yeah so then we were looking at the security footage here oh yeah uh, the guy had a mask and everything so they're never going to catch him but He's get, getting out of the office. He stayed here He's, for about an hour. Yeah, he came in at 10.04. He left at 10.54. So it's pretty much an hour that he stayed in here. Yeah, and you know, there's really not much to do here, right? Because you have meeting rooms and you have the yeah, studio. It's, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, and then he's leaving the place with the laptops you on see his hand. Yeah, you see him carrying yeah. the laptops and the computers. And in his other hand, drinking a can of Coke. That he got from our fridge. Because we have, in the reception area, we have a fridge with goodies and things for, our, for people who come in. Yeah. And so we were happy to see, we were happy to provide this delinquent <laughs> um, <laughs> beverages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, to tell you the truth, we were sad because we lost some computers, well, but they could have done so much damage It could have here. been worse. It could have been worse. So, and setbacks are part of business too. Yeah, it know? is. And yeah. we weren't here and nothing happened to us. Yeah, so it's all good. So, it's sure, we'll have to buy new computers and go through yeah. that whole process of setting up computers, which is always There's a pain. A yeah. But, yeah. hey. Yeah, it's it could have been good. much worse. So, and on a lighter note, on a lighter note, we published our book. Who Pops your popcorn? The Small Business Owner Guide to Marketing with Social Media. Yes, and we are very proud of having very the, proud the version of our book. Yes, very proud. See, this is just one yes. of many. <laughs> one of many, and it can help people with social media. It's really cool. That is correct. So get your copy from Amazon. Yeah. I suppose you can do that, or from our website. Who pops um, your popcorn? Who pops your popcorn? We do provide some popcorn recipes as well. There are popcorn recipes in the back, and they're not just traditional popcorn, no, boring salt. Cool stuff. You know, you've got uh, yeah. Well, we've got cool. microwave popcorn, but then yeah, you that can is do, common. That is common. Yeah. But then they've got she's. We put with some chocolate. with chocolate and with uh, what's that pepper thing? Uh, cayenne pepper. The chili. Tabasco, Tabasco. sauce. Yeah, yeah there, there's a, a ton. But so anyway, you will learn social media and entertain yourself with some unique popcorn as well. That is correct. So go get your copy. Who pops your popcorn? The small business owner guide to social media. It's marketing with social media. Yeah. What do you think if we talk about how to attract? oodles of avid clients i like that oodles of clients yeah well you know the only, you have to think about this first is not only about attracting a lot of clients but clients that really right. engage with you yes even though engage is a, a very overused, uh, overused word. word the fact is that there are clients that they really stay with you and they buy from you, you over stay. and over and over again clients who at some point or another might say i don't even know what i'm buying from you but i like you so much <laughs> that i want to buy and it happens it happens yeah yeah, it's so wonderful feeling. That's the kind of, of buyers you want mm -hmm. to attract, those that buy from you over and over and over again. Yes. Because why? If you have this type of clients, if something happens, something happens in the economy on the outside, that for some reason, for a period of time, you don't get new clients coming in. Well, you've got your loyal legion of clients. Yes. And that's really what uh, a sustainable business is about. Yeah. You know, that you can rely on the people that are around you. Yes. But how do you do that? How? Yeah, you know, we could go for hours telling you about cool tools and cool tricks that you oh, can yeah. do online. But there are two things that if you don't have... Two things! nothing will happen the very first one is really create a whole story and the right core message around you we have core talked message. about this before yes. the irresistible principle you should go back to other to other episodes and watch in depth those Absolutely. five steps mm -hmm. but you need to have that a message that talks on an emotional level with your audience and the second thing you need to have is a business choreography yeah. you know every single touch point 
with your customer needs to be implemented by you in a way that happens consistently. Explain a little deeper. For example, you all heard before that it takes seven to eight touches for you to get a customer. Guess yeah. what? Things are different right now. Yes, it things have changed. up to 18 touches 18. for the person to start thinking about buying from See, you. See, it has changed tremendously. I mean, from seven to 18 for them to even start considering. Exactly. It's not for them to buy. Yeah. So you know, the level of, of, of things that you have to do and of engagement that you have to put into place is tremendous mm -hmm. because you need to, to reach them time and time again. So you can't fool yourself that by doing one thing or using one tool it's going to be to be enough. Oh, you know, okay. if you do that, you really have what I call the biz op mindset. Yeah. You're just after quick money and easy things to do. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So think about every touch point, every single chance that you have to be in touch of a prospect yes. or, a, or a customer. What do you have in place to create a choreography and lead them into the desire to buy from you okay this is way more important Absolutely. than really paying attention on how many times you post a tweet on Twitter because again if you're not able to catch their attention in the first place Who talk cares? to them on an emotional level yeah. and have everything is structured in order to bring the sale you really have nothing yeah really you really have nothing because it doesn't really matter what tool you're using if this isn't in place first it's just a waste of time yes. and so they all have their place and their purpose and you would still we would still recommend using them but with the purpose and with the strategy and ultimately like Shahar you always say like every action needs to re needs to to reach a monetary uh, purpose transaction, yes. transaction so every action needs to lead to money ultimately yeah. and so Especially as you're, marketing, if you're a small business it's, yeah because every penny counts yeah so if, if you're a big business you do have the budget mm -hmm. to do a lot of branding out there but when you're not yeah you need to think that every single then action what? needs to bring some money back because everything that goes out has an impact yeah. in your business is at first ultimately you want it to be a huge impact a profitable one mm -hmm. but when you put out it hurts a little especially when you're a small business yeah. right and so it has to have a purpose and a clear pathway back to you to your pocket and it cannot only be getting visibility out there right you know get attention touch them on an emotional level yeah and make them desire to purchase from you. desire Okay, so I'm here with Nashua. Nashua is holding the camera in Antelope Island, Utah. Today is a Friday. We decided to take the day off because it's actually our, let's say, we are celebrating 10 years in Salt Lake City. So what's the best way to celebrate than outdoors in this gorgeous place? So we came to Antelope Island to actually photograph some spiders because that's the time to photograph them. And we decided, okay, let's do that and then let's go around the lake, around the island because it's going to be fun. Well, so we got to a place where they rent the boats and they had this pedal boat and we got all excited about it and let's do it. You know, when we were going to get the pedal boat, I saw that they also had motor boats and it did cross my mind that it would be a lot easier to go around the island with the motor boat. But we were so excited about this one that we stick with our decisions. That was the first mistake. The second mistake was to think and set a goal that we would go around a big island like this one in a paddle boat. Well, I have to make a, a business comparison here because it's quite often that once we make a decision, we stick by it. You know, like if it was the only possible choice, which is many times can be a mistake, like in this case. Right now, we are in the middle of the lake. We never got, not even close to, to half of the island and we are exhausted, right? We are not people that work out a lot, so you can imagine it didn't take too long for that to happen. Well, so the first thing is sometimes you have to understand that you didn't make the best decision as an entrepreneur and change it. It's that simple. Why did I didn't say I want that boat? It would be that simple with one phrase. And the other thing is you have to set realistic goals. You know, I, I think that deep down inside we knew it would be impossible to go around the island <laughs> just with the pedal boat but you know we were excited there was all that energy the fun going on and we went for a quest that we could not fulfill which brings me to the point of the difference between what's tragic and what's heroic you know the difference is that when the moment of change comes if you don't do anything it's very tragic but if you take action 
is heroic. Which one do you think you should choose? to it more so than the fun uh, and the thrill that it is just finding new things. But essentially what Kickstarter does is it features, it showcases um, businesses, ideas, people who want to launch a business or a product or a service or something, it features those businesses and it asks the people that visit the website basically to fund. So would you like to fund this new idea that I have and then you you can start, but we're not talking huge amounts of dollars, we're talking about maybe, depending on what it is, like 50 bucks up to whatever. And so it allows you to get funding from normal people, from day-to-day -day people, from the end consumer more so than actual investors. So it's a great uh, it's a great place for you to discover new cool tool gadgets and things like that. I've, I've gotten a few myself. but. From a business perspective, let's say you have um, an event coming up or you have something that could use a, a, a little promotional help. So what you could do is essentially post it on Kickstarter as a project that you want to start and then you're looking for funding. Well, essentially, let's, say, let's go with the events idea. You would, get, you would reach out to the people who could actually benefit from attending your event and ask them to fund that project. Ultimately, by funding the project, they get to attend the event. So that's that's the gist of it. You can go as creative as you'd like and think of different things and different ways that people could could fund your project and benefit from it. But ultimately, the really neat thing about it is that you're reaching the end consumer. You're reaching the people who would benefit from the products and services, uh, and events, or whatever it is that you're you're launching. So the, the really nice thing is, it's a way for you. It's another. Um, venue for you to get that at that attention and that traction and from buyers because generally speaking the people who are there are ready to whip out their wallets and invest in something and like I said it doesn't have to be a huge investment it could be something as 50 bucks one dollar I believe is the minimum it has to be and, to, and up and so it's just a matter of thinking creatively saying how can I tap into that audience and what can I do what can I use maybe it's a product that I want to launch it can be an information product maybe it's a physical product maybe it's an event and so forth so start thinking like that and go check out kickstarter.com Wow, what a show! Yeah, I hope you did enjoy quite a bit yes. and you put some of the information into action. Put it into action. Yeah. Go take action. And you know, hey, why don't you stop by our bestbuzzgift.com website. Yes. We have a gift there for you. Mm -hmm. Just download it. You'll like it. It's an awesome guide. So go take a look at it. Bestbuzzgift.com. See you next time. See you next time.